All right, so considering that I'm using both tons of movie footage and music as well in this episode, I'm expecting a shitload of copyright claims. Welcome to another episode of Sci-Fi Night Top 5. I'm your host, Sebastian Vendel Martinez, and in this episode we're listing our top 5 favorite hip-hop horror songs. Because, well, we've got to beat the top 5 favorite chainsaw fights in terms of bizarreness and absurdity somehow, right? So yeah, this will be one of the strangest top 5 lists we've done, but whatever, it's my show, I'll list what I want. So, those of you who have been following my channel for a while will probably know that I'm a big hip-hop fan. I did a three-part mini-series on rappers in sci-fi and horror films, which you can view by clicking the annotation on the screen. I tend to reference rappers in hip-hop, and basically I'm just a huge fan of that genre. This list isn't just about horror films though, it's about rap songs made by sampling horror movie themes. There are so many classic horror movie scores that have lived on alongside the movie that made them famous, and some of these songs make for surprisingly good hip-hop samples. Surprise, motherfucker! However, let me lay down some ground rules for this list. The hip-hop song must have sampled the horror theme so that you can at least tell what song it is. And while these songs are ranked more under musical merits, but we're also looking at the film that the theme is from and how well the song ties into it, which is obviously a plus. So we're looking for all kinds of connections from the lyrics and the movie that we can find, and basically we're just seeing how well this all gels together. Alright, so before we get to the real list, we're gonna start off with an honorable mention, which goes to the 3-6 Mafia song, Mafia... You know what, I'm not really comfortable saying that word, uh, so I'm just gonna say ninjas, and I think you know what I'm talking about. The song is called Mafia Ninjas, and it's based on Welcome to the Creep Show from the movie Creep Show. Our first honorable mention goes to the grimy, dirty track by 3-6 Mafia, which definitely has a lot of dark themes and lyrics to go alongside the film that it's sampled from, which, by the way, was composed by John Harrison. For example, check out some of these lyrics. Wouldn't this fit right into the movie? Gotta go, you know that devil shit is still up there. I'm dirty for the toss. Bitch, don't you hit the pause. I lock you bitches in the icebox when I'm full of frost. So much dope, the best and toxic in the mind is just a cut. They've taken the original song and made it much more bombastic and loud which is pretty much what 3-6 Mafia do. But not necessarily something that works for getting on the top 5 placement. In my opinion, it's a bit too loud and screamy and not something I can listen to for too long. To be honest, I don't really think the song is very good either, but sampling Creepshow gets it a mention at least, and the first few listenings make for some hardcore gangster rap fun. Alright, so with that out of the way, that brings us to the number 5 spot, which goes to Murder Inc. by Dr. Dre featuring MS Rock and Hitman that samples a theme to Halloween by John Carpenter. Alright, so this is a pretty damn good sample off of an excellent film which was recorded on a pretty damn excellent album. The John Carpenter horror film made the psychotic killer Michael Myers a slasher legend. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. And the album 2001, which features the track Murder, Inc., is quite legendary as well in its own right. So in this song, Dr. Dre takes kind of a back seat and lets Hitman fire off some hot lyrics that definitely sound like something Michael Myers would write. When darkness be closing in, I'm motivated with the howl and wind, with a list of chosen men. The title track, Murder Inc., has a bit of a double meaning as the term Murder Inc. refers to writing some killer rhymes, 
but it could also refer to a beef between Eminem, who was signed by Dr. Dre, and Ja Rule, who was signed to the label Murder, Inc. The song itself is dark, stalkery, brings up themes of murder and crime scenes, so basically the lyrics accompany the theme to Halloween perfectly. And it definitely reminds me not to piss off Dr. Dre and his crew. There's no defending my plot. I know your every movement for six months I watch. Could have got you at your baby's mother's house, even at your down low weed spot. But the backdrop wasn't flattering enough. I didn't want people gathering your stuff. Snapshots of blood splattering from the snub. Obviously, Dr. Dre's masterful production does a lot to strengthen the song, along with a sweet flow and biting lyrics. Basically, they've looped and sped up the original piano theme to this classic horror flick to make it suit this kind of track better, and it works pretty damn well. Alright, so that brings us to the number 4 spot, which is occupied by Gimme Some Mo by Busta Rhymes, which samples the Bernard Herrmann theme to Psycho. So here is a pretty odd combination, one of the fastest rappers alive and the orchestric build-up to a Hitchcock classic. But you know what? Damn, Busta Rhymes pulls this off well. His classic Faster Than Lightning flow in combination with an eerie orchestral score to a classic film is much better than people would have expected. Psycho is one of Alfred Hitchcock's best and most well-known films and revolves around a murder mystery at a motel that involves what seems to be the psychotic Bates family. She just goes a little mad sometimes. And there's definitely a dash of that psychotic killer Norman Bates in the lyrics as well. Speaking my niggas be coming through, shoving you out, killing off any and everything you're talking about. See you in the club, now we walking you out. Should have thought twice for you when they open your mouth. However, as is the case with most Busta Rhymes songs, at times his flow gets a little too crazy and kind of hard to follow. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's great, but it's kind of like... What? Wait, come again? But despite all that, and me not really being a huge fan of Busta Rhymes to be honest, damn his flow in the song is just as insane as Norman Bates. Every time we be ripping and be blowing it down, blowing you all fucking with the hottest niggas around. Rockers for me and my people run the guitar, holding it down, thinking the wild nigga gave me my crown. Buster Rhymes' usual insane flow is certainly captivating, and I love the contrast of this hardcore urban rapper and the classic horror score. Had the song been a bit more psycho in terms other than the crazy flow, it would have been higher on the list. But as of now, it sliced its way to the number four spot. We've reached the halfway point of the number three spot, and damn, do I love this song! The number three spot goes to the song G.O.D. Part 3 Remix by Mob Deep, which samples the theme to the Phantasm series. I've talked about the Phantasm series before, in fact, it made an appearance in my video on top five favorite chainsaw fights, and I will do a special on the series as soon as I get around to marathoning all five films in one night. Anyway, the extremely underrated franchise is accompanied by an excellent musical score by Fred Myro and Malcolm Seagrave. The film series is kind of hard to explain. It's very surreal and very bizarre, but really, really fun, interesting, and unique. You think that when you die, you go to heaven. <laughs> you come to us. The theme, however, is timeless and has carried the tone of the film greatly. Alright, so I'm not really a guy that prefers remixes, so to speak, but when it comes to this song, Damn, G.O.D. Part 3 Remix is just simply way better. The dark and ominous theme of Phantasm paired with a sick flow that Havoc and Prodigy bring just works so well, and since the plot of the Phantasm films is super weird and hard to follow, it's hard to critique a song for not relating that well to the series in terms of its lyrics. However, there are definitely a couple lines in the song that remind me of the brooding, dark, and sinister themes of the film. Infamous Enterprises Surprise kid, get up on that ass like a virus Live in the fleshes, the freshest, flyers, conniving this Violating niggas you don't wanna fuck with 
The way the original theme is sped up slightly, but also made heavier and darker, while simultaneously relating the eerie nature of Myron Seagrave's work is admirable, and also what elevates this song so high on the list. Also, I don't really think I'm reaching here, but I feel like some of the camaraderie from the film seeps through, as well as the strong bond between Reggie and Mike, which was pretty essential to the film's story. We definitely see elements of that brotherhood in G.O.D. Part 3, but in a much more ghetto way, of course. I'm stuck with my peoples and they stuck with me. Anybody in my crew would get bucked for me. And I damn sure will take the slug for thee. We rep a QBC from the NYC. Also, one of the signature things from Phantasm is the floating orbs that latch onto your face and drill a hole in your head. This could just be me overanalyzing, but the last part of the song could very well be a reference to that. Not necessarily, though. To go against my mom would be senseless To resent this, she must got a death wish Simp care, really it is My nigga's face bitch, but still carrying gats Going for hits Overall, this is just a great hip-hop song With a great sample from a great and super weird film series Alright, so that brings us to the number 2 spot And by far the most famous song on this list Which goes to Ready or Not by the Fugees Which samples Boa de Kea by Enya in Stephen King's Sleepwalkers. So yeah, I know I completely butchered the actual pronunciation of a song, but I don't care. So I'm pretty sure even people who don't listen to hip-hop have heard this one. Most people recognize the classic hip-hop track the moment the song starts up with a melodical intro. But what a lot of people don't know is that the song sampled the soundtrack to Stephen King's Sleepwalkers made by Enya, and it did so without even altering the original too much. The film is about a mother and son who are both creatures called sleepwalkers, monsters capable of changing their appearance by draining the life force of young women. I don't know who you are, but I know you're not who you say you are. The son comes into contact with a young woman called Tanya, who is set up to become her next victim, unless she can escape her clutches. Alright, so right off the bat, there are some pretty obvious connections between the song and film in the song's chorus. Basically, it relays some of the themes of stalkers, supernatural stuff, but also the kind of longing that the mother and son have to their next victim. Yeah. Ready or not, here I come, you can't hide Gonna find you and take it slowly Ready or not, oh, here I come, oh, you can't hide Gonna find you and then yo, you yo, want yo. me So yeah, like I said before, this song isn't solely about sleepwalkers, but this list is based around the connections that we can make between the song and the film. Anyway, Wycliffe Sean even begins the very first verse of the song by referencing the film and the book. Now that I escape sleepwalk away, yeah. those who come yeah. late know the world they kick, jail bars ain't golden gates, those who fake they break. And if you pay attention, the references to Sleepwalker definitely don't stop there and are actually woven into the story of the song pretty well. I pour a sip on the concrete, but it is cease, but no, don't weep. Why Clef's in the state of sleep? Lauren Hill also starts off her verse with some themes very akin to those of Sleepwalkers, referencing the vagabond lifestyle that the mother and son have, moving from town to town to drain victims of their life force while also acknowledging that it's her way of life due to the creatures that they are. Yo, I play my enemies like a game of chess where I rest. No stress if you don't smoke cess. Less, I must confess, my destiny's manifest. There's some cortex and sweats, I make tracks like I'm homeless. Basically, this is the perfect entry for the list because it ties in so well with a film that it samples, while also working exceptionally well in its own right. Still though, the references, great lyrics, great sample, and the classic nature of this song means it has to be close to the top. Alright, so it brings us to the number one spot on this list, which goes to the song Genibus by the artist Cannabis, who samples the soundtrack to Candyman by Philip Glass. 
At the top of the list we find one of the most underrated tracks ever from one of the most underrated rappers ever, which samples a theme from one of the most underrated horror series ever, and damn this song ties in greatly with the film. In the beginning I discovered wordplay I experimented with some syllables from the first to the third day On the fourth I searched for the words to say How to compress complex verbiage in the least amount of space I Okay, so let's start by explaining some shit. In this film, a student is investigating legends and myths coming across the urban legend of a candy man A man with a hook for a hand who used to be a slave that was murdered many many years ago If his name is said five times in front of a mirror, he is said to appear and wreak havoc if you look in the mirror and you say his name five times, he'll appear behind you, breathing down your neck. So like I said, the soundtrack to the film is composed by Philip Glass, a very well-known and respected composer, who actually didn't want to make the soundtrack for a horror film as he didn't like that genre. But he was persuaded to do so, and man are we glad that he did, because it is just timeless. The soundtrack has elements of both light and darkness, much like the film and antagonist himself. The music is both soothing and haunting, both modest and incredibly grand. There's something almost almighty to the score. Alright, so moving on to the rap song. The song titled Genibus by Cannabis is a reference to Genesis, the first chapter of the Old Testament. Our protagonist in the film is researching myths, and depending on how you look at it, some could say that religious texts are the most respected and revered myths in existence. So in the film, the actual existence of the Candyman is constantly questioned and critiqued, and that lack of faith is something that's also brought up in the song. I read the cosmos, but God wrote, predicted as much. The inhabitants lack faith, but resistance is tough. So, Genibus obviously has a lot of religious comparisons and overtones, which at first glance might not reflect at all on the material that it's sampled from, but it does when we look a little bit closer. There's something unescapable and constant about the Candyman curse. He's always there. You can't escape. There's something almost godly about him. So there's another connection to the fact that the Candyman is basically resurrected from death, striking fear to those around him, and the fact that he doesn't seem to be concerned with the fears of us mere mortals. There's also some lyrics which I'm convinced are direct references to Candyman, as he was killed for simply being with a white woman when that wasn't allowed, making him a tragic and wronged character who turns into a villain they can actually kind of sympathize with. First rapper to speak over beats dogmatically Mixed with Elizabethan drama and tragedy My motto is to dress casually and live lavishly Look at the Victorian tapestry in back of me However, at the end of the day, Candyman is a hellish being As powerful and sympathetic as he may be, the Candyman curse is in the end a damning element that is pretty much inescapable 120 beta cycles, high volts ignite your eyeballs Till you see the fire in front of you Optic codes and rods melt one at a time Till you realize you in hell Rip the jack is not done with you Basically, this is the best written and most interesting song on the list That ties into the work that it sampled in such a smart and unique way Cannabis' intellectual lyrics and biting flow is excellent and raw Striking a perfect balance between the more delicate parts of the score that sampled of a film. Sure, it's not that obvious, but there are actually quite a few connections between these two excellent works of art that I had to put it on the number one spot, and basically because it's just such a great song. I also highly recommend the whole album Rip the Jacker, as well as the Candyman series. Both are really, really good. So, that about does it for this episode of Sci-Fi Night Top 5. We hope you enjoyed it. If you've got a different list, then I don't know what you're doing with your life because I don't think anybody's been thinking about this as rigorously as I have. 
Anyway, if you do, let us know what it's like in the comments, where you can also let us know what kind of topics you want to see brought up here in the future. I'm your host, Sebastian Vandel Martinez, and I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.